Hey, it's Mike here, and today my response to this story, Harvard student eats 720 eggs in a month and his cholesterol drops. I ate one egg per hour, every hour, for a whole month. Now this has commenters like Carney, carnivore Dr. Ken Berry, saying, quote, Eggs are a heart-healthy food for all humans. Eat as many as you want. And others using this as proof that their high cholesterol, high meat diet is perfectly healthy. But immediately recognizing the face of the dude in the articles, I know that there's much more going on with this story and that really this is misleading for 99.9% .9 of people that are gonna be watching these videos. And of course going, cholesterol's great, eat as much eggs as they want. And so we're gonna talk about why he says he did this stunt and why I think his angle is not a good one for public health. We're gonna look at some other egg research as well. So let's just go. Lightning fast though, I have a Costa Rica trip in late January that completely filled up. And because of that, I just wanna try and get a second one going. We have some people signed up already, but need more in order to fully confirm the trip. And the trip is gonna be, as usual, filled with animals and delicious food and nature. And I will say some people are repeating the trip because they had such a good time the first time. So yeah, check it out in the link below. All right, now let's see what Nick, the guy who ate all these eggs, has to say about why he did it. I hypothesized that eating 700 120 eggs in one month, which alone amounts to 133,200 milligrams of cholesterol would not increase my cholesterol. Specifically, it would not increase my LDL cholesterol. And yeah, conventional research and wisdom would lead one to believe that that much cholesterol and that many eggs would increase his level, but uh, what were the results? And indeed, drum roll, it didn't. Not a smidge. All those eggs did not increase my cholesterol. Even though my dietary intake of cholesterol more than quintupled, my LDL cholesterol actually dropped by two 2% over the first two weeks, and then it dropped by 18 more percent over the subsequent two weeks. Yeah, you heard it. So we should just throw away, for example, this meta-analysis of 17 studies, the largest study on the topic of egg cholesterol and blood cholesterol levels, which concludes that their study shows the impact of egg consumption on lipid profiles among healthy subjects with a longer time and more egg consumption leading to higher LDL to HDL ratio, as well as higher LDL or bad cholesterol levels. And as a meta-analysis of randomized control trials, that is at the top of the hierarchy of scientific evidence well what he did doesn't even land on the pyramid at all and he immediately claims there's a reason here you know mechanistically the cholesterol they're eating from eggs well your body just handles it differently here he is briefly just high level summary when you eat cholesterol the cholesterol binds to receptors on gut cells and this stimulates the release of a hormone called cholecin and cholecin binds to its receptor on the liver called GPR146 and this inhibits endogenous cholesterol synthesis by the liver so things balance out and homeostasis is maintained. So he's saying that cholecin just makes it so that dietary cholesterol from eggs doesn't raise your cholesterol. He's at least implying that yet again, meta-analysis of 17 studies showing that is clearly not the case. So we can't get too caught up in mechanism here. But wait, with all the cholesterol and eggs that he ate, his LDL did go down. So what the heck is going on here? And the first major red flag is how his cholesterol chart doesn't seem to have a Y axis. I think this was completely done on purpose. I mean, just looking around, how many cholesterol charts don't have a Y axis? Uh, actually none. Why would he do this? Because he knows that the level would be so glaringly strange that he could no longer use this as a clickbait story that the average person would think applies to them. And he does get into the clickbait aspect of this at the end and I will respond to him there, but it's important to just understand who Nick is, where he's coming from here, and that is that he's somebody who is regularly on a ketogenic diet, and he's one of the type of people that when they do that, they get their fat really high up, their LDL, that bad cholesterol, just skyrockets high, insanely high, 400, 500, 600, 700, some people get to 1,000. And I know that his level personally can get up at least around 400, which is, yes, four times the cutoff for what is considered optimal. And he's also somebody that has a history of experimenting with his LDL level, clocking it up and down by changing these macro levels. And that has to do with carbohydrates, which he does touch on. What accounts for that change in drop slope? Well, carbohydrates, dietary carbohydrates. Adding back carbs, really of any sort, 
sort, be it Oreos, fruit, or starches, is sufficient to reduce LDL in the so-called lean mass hyperresponder phenotype. And he's learned that he can just crank his LDL way down from you know 400 or whatever by about 70% just by adding carbs, it doesn't matter the source. And, and with this in mind, he did his Oreo experiment, which he lowered his LDL from 384 down to 70% less. And he did show that chart in this video here. You can just see, yeah, boom, 384 down there as he added carbs. No, so he's taking advantage of a metabolic situation that he is familiar with, which I personally think is highly dangerous. We'll talk about that later. But thankfully, some of the smarter commenters saw the actual plot here. A Chase Polk says, why didn't you show any test results? The fact that you didn't show your LDL before and after numbers is very strange. This is a very unscientific video that people are now going to use as evidence that eggs don't raise cholesterol. He showed the Oreo LDL results and his cholesterol was crazy high to start with 384. It will be a lot easier to get a drop if your numbers are sky high to start, exactly. So it's likely that he started this experiment with an LDL around 400, maybe even 500, and it was still at around, you know, mid 300s or 400 by the end. And as he says in the video, he again achieved this drop by adding in carbohydrates, in this case, fruit. Included bananas, blueberries, strawberries, and a few frozen cherries. And he goes on to say, the extra dose of carbs dominated over the insane amounts of cholesterol I was eating. And yeah, it is the case that the carbohydrate increase dropping LDL overpowered the LDL raising effect of whatever dietary cholesterol he was eating, and he was eating a ton. So does this mean that really, you know, dietary cholesterol doesn't have an effect? No, I think it's more likely that there are a couple of things going on here. First of which is the dietary cholesterol ceiling that we see, for example, from this meta-analysis. From this chart, as dietary cholesterol levels really increase into those higher levels, the effect on blood cholesterol tapers off. I mean, going from zero to 500 milligrams of dietary cholesterol has a way more dramatic effect than going from 1,500 to 2,000. Now, what exactly is going on? Is it that your body just has an absorption limit? It goes, I don't need to absorb that much cholesterol, and then it doesn't affect blood cholesterol. That's less important than the fact that most people that are watching this video, I would venture to say 99% of them, uh, would not be taking advantage of the cholesterol ceiling. They are eating a diet in which adding more eggs would increase LDL cholesterol, which again is causal to atherosclerosis from Mendelian randomization studies and other data that we have. LDL is causal to atherosclerosis. And what is also relevant to people who are trying to lower their risk and might decide to lower cholesterol as well is back to this chart. They actually stratified it by starting cholesterol amount. And you can see that somebody who's not eating any cholesterol or cholesterol from animals, uh, their rise from eating cholesterol is much more dramatic. So it's clear that there's an opportunity here to get the cholesterol out of the diet and lower that LDL or bad cholesterol, which causes heart disease. And I would add that the concern here isn't even just about cholesterol that he ate. It's also about the saturated fat that he ate. He was saying that toward the end, he was eating about 75 grams of saturated fat. And that's insane and would raise the LDL of any normal dietary person. But I think what's going on here is a bit more dangerous, especially combined with the narrative that the egg industry is pushing out. They of course fund a ton of studies and you know, here's an egg industry shill and their paper saying, oh yeah, recent findings are inconsistent regarding the possible relationship between egg consumption and cardiovascular mortality and morbidity. And while I do believe that signals can kind of be crossed when we have a standard American diet where people are eating a ton of animal saturated fat from different sources, can it drown out some eggs in some situations? Maybe, but it's also the case that, for example, from a large 2021 study like this on over 500,000 people, each intake of an additional half of a whole egg per day was associated with a 7% increase in all-cause mortality and cardiovascular and cancer mortality. In other words, in a normal healthy human context, adding say five eggs per day would increase risk of cardiovascular disease and all-cause mortality by 70%. Or in the words of Dr. Ken Berry, eggs are a heart healthy food for all humans, eat as many as you want. And they did look further at eggs without cholesterol versus eggs with cholesterol, I'm talking to egg whites, and they did find that yes, for each additional 300 milligrams of dietary cholesterol per day, that was associated with 19, 16, and 24% higher all-cause cardiovascular disease and cancer mortality, respectively. In particular, saying that the cholesterol was responsible for, you know, between 50 and 63% of the mortality effects in whole eggs. 
And this 2022 study on over three and a half million people comes to a similar conclusion, more eggs, more cardiovascular disease. But then the question becomes, why wasn't he just straightforward starting the first sentence of the video saying, hey, I'm in a unique situation on my keto diet where my LDL is insane, but I can eat as many eggs as I want as long as I add carbs, unlike most people, in which case it would be very dangerous. Why didn't he do that? Well, he wanted to do some clickbaity stuff to get attention. What you'll find, no surprise, is that more extreme messages carry further. They become memes. They can self-propagate and spread a message. Sadly, the messages on social media, particularly in the diet space, are often shallow or hollow. But in their best forms, I think they can serve as intellectual provocation to bring people together, provided those people are willing to listen to the words being said and the actual arguments being made when you go a level deeper beyond the packaging. Yeah, he's calling it intellectual provocation and how his Oreo experiment actually got people involved in research, et cetera. And I would say in that case, Oreos and sugar aren't generally seen as a major you know, LDL riser and cause of heart disease. I know sugar does have a role, but in this case, we're talking about eggs contributing to the increase in LDL and heart disease being our number one killer and this being just a much more dangerous connection to try and sever. Incentive structure drives content creators to give you extremes like 720 eggs. Now contemplate, what's the effect of that? What's the effect on me, on you, and then back on me? Is it bad? Uh, yes, you reinforce the idea that eggs are not bad for heart health to 250,000 people, and you did that partially by excluding the y-axis on a chart. And I will say there's one thing, it's like, here's what Nick did, and here's what the news outlets did, which is just completely running with it, where many of these articles just completely omitted the fact that he is in a unique dietary situation and did this through carbohydrates but they of course mentioned the coalescing uh, aspect. So is he responsible for that poor and dangerous reporting? Well, I wouldn't say that he's fully responsible for it, but I do think he is responsible for setting a trap here. I mean, he's obviously not a dumb guy. He knew that people want eggs to be healthy. He knew that it would be newsworthy to make it look like eggs don't have a negative effect or even have a positive effect on cholesterol. And in terms of the response, I don't think any comment sums it up better than this one. As the Irish Mirror shared, quote, I clicked because I knew that your LDL would not increase. And I want to share this video with some of family that freaks out that I am eating all eggs and meat. And so yeah, people are literally using this video is a stamp of approval to continue with their bad habits. And this reminds me of a really just situation where somebody could have acted the way that he did, but decided not to. And that brings me to plant-based cardiologist, Danielle Bellardo, talking about a type two diabetic patient who went on a bender. I had a patient in residency who reversed their, I actually don't like using the word reverse, sorry, put their diabetes into remission, improved mm -hmm. their hemoglobin A1C. This patient went from eating just a ton of processed foods, whatever, and went on a cocaine binge for a few months, okay? Literally a cocaine binge and um, eating Twinkies, candy bars, but low calorie. And their hemoglobin A1C and their high risk CRP totally normalized. Yeah. From that anecdote, would we be universally recommending cocaine and Twinkies as a diet? Of course not, right? We can't extrapolate from anecdotes. Now, if she wanted to play Nick's angle, she might have gotten together with that person and made a video about how, oh, no, you know, maybe actually drugs and alcohol and whatever can cure diabetes. Oh, but just ambiguously. The title could have been, I cured my diabetes with cocaine. Million views. But instead, she used it as an example of how unhealthy habits can falsely be used to present a health solution. That individual lost a substantial amount of weight, which is why that happened. Sure in a really negative way, right? They lost weight because they weren't eating because they were using cocaine. That is nothing I would ever recommend to patients. And I'm saying maybe because she took a Hippocratic oath or whatever, you know, something that reads in a popular version, quote, I will prevent disease wherever I can for prevention is preferable to cure. And also that I will mislead the public into believing that harmful substances are actually healthy for views. I don't remember seeing that one on there. And just for a little bit more background before I close the video, um, Nick Norwitz is also the one working with other authors on the whole lean mass hyper responder gimmick study, as I now refer to it. Uh, they call that high rise in LDL, among some other things, 
which is happening in these skinnier keto people as lean mass hyper responders. And they're trying to make a study showing that these high LDL levels don't increase atherosclerosis. And I have a ton of problems with the study. I responded to it before. No, there was essentially a whistleblower who was involved with the study to an extent came out and said, hey, there's some shady stuff going on. They're excluding people in their group only that have heart disease or a coronary artery calcium score greater than zero. And they also did some other sketchy things like not adjust for the statistically significantly different BMI. When I pressed one of the other authors on it, they essentially said, we don't believe in adjustment in this situation because our group is so special. And well, guess what? If you think the group that you're studying is so special and you're making special research exceptions for them, you're gonna get special results. So I would bet almost anything at the end of that year long study, if they're gonna find exactly what they wanted to find because that is their goal. And that's why I once again needed to respond to Nick's public health messaging because in the past he's led a lot of people to believe that they're these lean mass hyper responders. And then some somewhere halfway hidden in the video, he goes, oh, well not as many people are these lean mass hyper responders as they think. And he's really burying the lead of the major warnings that should be put with all of this, even if he truly believes the things he's saying. And in that case, leading people to eat as much animal fat and meat and all these things as they want and feel great about it. And so I had to comment on this pattern that I'm seeing with Nick where he's essentially using this weird metabolic fluke or whatever's going on that is increasing this LDL and you know, leading people to believe in this weird soft, half ambiguous way that they can eat as much animal products as they want. They can eat as much eggs as they want. They can have as high of LDL as they would ever want and they'll be just fine. You know, whether he's explicitly saying that or not, he is absolutely not explicitly starting his videos with the warnings that they deserve to have. So in the end, no, he did not prove that eggs don't raise cholesterol. He did not disprove you know, that meta-analysis of 17 studies, for example, the largest one on that topic. Sadly, the news articles, as he desired, absolutely ate this up and are spreading the misinformation that eggs don't have any negative effect. And this is something that people are gonna read and they're gonna latch onto this idea for years and they're gonna say, hey, that one guy ate 700 eggs and nothing happened. I can just slam down these omelets and bacon and eggs and all that stuff. Yet Nick is painting it as, oh, this is all just some fun intellectual experiment. Well, no, this is like public health messaging and the result is really not good as we can see from the comments here. And so I would go ahead and say that he should make a follow-up video saying the average person will not see this. High LDL is causal to atherosclerosis and then the pattern that virtually everybody that's watching these videos is eating, but I don't think he's gonna do that. And that's because a large part of his niche where he gets his views is this keto high meat community that he needs to appease as well. However, I think that's irresponsible. Anyway, uh, I could keep rambling forever and I would love to hear what you guys think about all this, but I also wanna say, if you are interested in that Costa Rica trip, if it is not full still, check out that link below, see if there's still spots available and we can see some awesome slots and have a good time. Other than that, please don't eat 720 eggs. Of course, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.